first of many occurring today. Courtesy of the Christian Heritage Foundation, owned by and operated by Mary Ann Mize. Would you please welcome Mary Ann Mize to your hearts and minds? All that you see and are going to experience today with these rare special scrolls is courtesy of Mary Ann, our dear personal friend. Her associate is Charles Garrett. Charles searches over the world and has been able to acquire and put together the only complete set of all the Old Testament scrolls in existence. There is no university, there is no synagogue, there is no archive in Israel. There's only one place, the Christian Heritage Foundation, that has all of the Old Testament scrolls in one place. I'm here to explain to you the significance of our Charles Good morning. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Paul. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to, to share with you guys. I'll do it quickly and painlessly, so we'll leave a little time for some uh, question and answer time. Uh, the truth is, what I don't know, Dr. Baugh does. And so uh, when you ask a question and I have to say I don't know, and believe me, there's many of those questions. I am not an expert. But then again, maybe I am, because you know the definition of that, right? An X is a has-been, a spurt's a big drip. That may, that may be me, but um, uh, I got involved in this uh, through, the crea uh, through the Christian Heritage Foundation in 2007. My then boss and original founder with his wife, Mary Ann, is Walter Mize. He started it, the foundation, to help churches in our county be better at what they should be doing. And he did that in 1982, and then in 2007, he fell in love with Israel. And then we met a man who had a set of scrolls very similar to this, only they weren't complete. And through that, we kept his scrolls for almost a year. And we showed them right there at our office. We're right on the square of downtown Cleburne, the metropolis. Everything is a suburb of Cleburne, Dallas, Fort Worth, you know. So when you get to our, our little town, you're close to the other big ones as well. Um, at the end of that year, Gary said to Walter and I, I think the Lord has impressed me to move my set of scrolls here in Cleburne to the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. And Walter said, well, what am I going to do to honor Israel? And Gary said, I don't, well, I don't really don't know. Now, Walter was a man of means. Um, he had spent all his life trying to raise money and make money and, uh, and have money, and he did. And Gary said, Walter, you know, they're rare. They're almost extinct. They don't write them much anymore. Um, and the Jewish people don't like selling things to Gentile people. And it's even worse in your case because your last name is Mize. You're not only just a regular Gentile, you're a German Gentile. And we don't like you. And he said, Walter said, well, that's okay, we'll do it anyway. And Gary said, well, I actually think it'll be impossible and Walter, my fondest memory is this. He looked up, crossed his hands, and said, Ah, God and I just love that word. Well, Gary left that day because he felt that Walter felt, Just run down to Walmart and get another set. And Gary said, No, it'll be impossible. But as you can tell, it hasn't been. And it, Walter passed away the following month after that meeting. And then two months later in March, Gary called me from Israel and said, you're not going to believe this. A miracle is I have found five of the 16 scrolls you're going to need to have a full set. You want me to get them? I put him on hold. I love doing that to people out of country. And I called Mrs. Mize over here and I said, here's the deal. And she said, well, I think that's what Walter would have wanted us to do. So another miracle is, is that we could afford them because they're not cheap. The third miracle is you don't walk into any country and walk out with antiquity. So you don't just go over there and say, hey, there's a scroll, I'll take it. Put it in your suitcase and come home. Probably when the suitcase gets to customs, you're not getting home with that scroll or any antiquity. But we had met a gentleman the year before who was a fairly high ranking official, military official in Israel. And he had an import export license. And so we were able to get these legally 
and have them so that we can show them and so we can display them. Because I don't know if you've ever thought about it or not, but this is God's original word. Now, that word original gets tossed around a lot. People won't know if these are original. Well, in one sense, yes, they are because they're all handwritten, just like the very first one uh, in the Torah scroll, uh, Genesis in the beginning, when that was first penned by Moses, that was the, that was the original, that was the first edition. And everything since then has been copies, copies of copies of copies. And everybody here knows that God created two kinds of people. He created Jews and Gentiles. But he created Jews in two kinds as well. There's Ashkenazi Jews, which means they were European, European heritage, you know, um, anywhere that's not Israel, or the Holy Land, you might call it, Spain or Portugal. Those, those are, uh, those are uh, European born, Ashkenazi. But if they are Holy Land born, Spain and Portugal, they're called Sephardic. Now, the only difference in those two, two Jews are the way they display and protect their scrolls. Ashkenazi Jews, they always cloak their scrolls in what's called mantles, but they're generally very, very beautiful. They're hand embroidered. They pretty much all have the same thing, embroidered them on them. There's two or three different styles uh, that they put different things on. But Sephardic Jews always encase their scrolls in canisters. I don't know why. Could be the harsher climates or whatever, but th this is what they do. Now, the scroll itself is identical in either case. You've got Ashkenazi, you've got Tor uh, Sephardic, but they're the same kind of scroll. But those are the two kinds. There's 16 scrolls in a set. Makes up all 39 books of the Old Testament. They're represented up here. It's the reason we say this is a complete set. Uh, anybody ever heard the word Tanakh? Tanakh? It's an anagram. The T stands for Torah, which is what all of these are up here. And the Torah is the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And that's in a Torah scroll. All of these underneath these mantles, they all have scrolls underneath there. We just don't show them because if we show you one, which is in this canister up here, the rest of them are identical to it. Other than the one in the canister is written on deer skin. This is on sheep skin. Most of these are on sheep skin with an occasional deer skin thrown in here or there. And so that's kind of the difference in them. But take 16 scrolls. Now, when, if you count them, you're going to find more than 16 because of the way they're spooled. Uh, if you were to count the books in the Old Testament, you get 39. But you see, in, the old, in our Bible, we've got 1st and 2nd Kings and 1st and 2nd Samuel and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Well, they don't do that. They do Kings, Chronicles, Samuel. It's all just one scroll. The Torah is five books in one scroll. 